Let's start with a quick question. I'm sure most of you have heard about golf, right? Well then, who here thinks golf is an easy sport? Raise your hand. Now, keep your hand up if you play or have ever played golf. Well, I can see that most of you think that this might not be much of an easy sport. However, if you play, you'll know that it isn't. To those outside of the bubble, it may just seem like an ordinary sport. A sport that consists of swinging your club back and forth to hit a ball towards a target. But what I want to convince you of today is that for me, it's a way to explain life. This quote by Bobby Jones, famous golf legend, shows the existing parallelism that exists between golf and life. And it's the view from which I decided to play the game. So here it goes. Golf is the closest game to the game we call life. You get bad breaks from good shots, you get good breaks from bad shots, but you'll always have to play the ball from where it lies. In life, just as in golf, you'll face good rounds and bad rounds. You'll face bunkers, hazards, out of bounds on your way to the hole. But no matter what, you'll always have to play the ball from where it lies. Just as you have to get up every day and make something of yourself, no matter how bad yesterday was. It's a game of perseverance and mental strength. Sometimes you may feel crushed just from thinking how bad your last shot was and the endless possibilities of an even worse shot coming next. But that's life. While it may sound cliche, life is getting crushed and getting back up. Understanding that life won't always be perfect and you'll always have a bad round is an essential part of life, just as it is an essential part of golf. You may be a rookie or a professional player, but you'll always have a bad day. But you see, learning this was not easy. I began playing golf when I was around six years old. My dad got me into it because he and his family were die-hard golfers. But what I loved about it is that he never pushed me or forced me to do it. I just had fun. In fact, we both had fun. I began taking classes and quickly moved into tournaments. We began with some lower division tournaments and as, and as we went on, we moved on to some higher level events. Our lives were basically eat, sleep, golf and repeat. I started training with some incredible players and by the time I was 12, coaches were already telling my parents about getting me towards university scouts so that I could go to college for golf. To say the least, life was moving fairly quickly, but I loved it. I loved the adrenaline before a tournament, the feeling of making a putt or hitting a nice bunker shot, getting to bond with my dad over a sport we were both so passionate for. I wouldn't change it for anything. But as I told you before, you get bad breaks from good shots, you get good breaks from bad shots. It wasn't always that easy. Growing up, I learned from some very demanding teachers. One told me once that I would never make it in this game, that I wasn't good enough, that I would never end up achieving my dream of playing at a higher level tournament. But you know what? It was this negativity that fueled me that much more to achieve my dream of playing a national, a national tournament. So I put my all into it. I began doing physical therapy watching videos, training five times a week, improving my strength, studying courses, you name it, I did it, if it meant going to a national tournament. I wanted to make it. I wanted to make it, not just to show others, but to show myself that I was worth it. However, getting to the national tournament was like a hole full of hazards. And as a golfer, I've had my own dose. You see, to classify, you first had to go to a local qualifier. If you made it through, you went to a regional qualifier, and it was only then that you got to play at the national tournament. 
To give you a sense of how competitive this was, around 160 young golfers were enrolled in the local qualifier, and only 18 made it to the national tournament. I remember the day of my local qualifier as if it was yesterday. It was only me and one other girl, and whoever had a better game that one single day would get a direct seat at nationals. I went into my first nine holes feeling completely lost. I played terribly, and I felt completely infuriated at myself. Starting the back nine holes, my competitor had 10 shots on me, and I knew that I had to play under pressure and like never before to get it back. I went to the second round with a blank mind. I thought each shot calmly, and by the time we got to the 18th hole, we were even par. Everything was going to come down to this one last hole. I remember I didn't end up winning. However, my score was good enough to get me to the regional tournament. When I made it here, I was extremely nervous. I didn't know what was going to go on. Once at the regional tournament, I felt the competition was gonna be a lot harder. Before, I was playing versus one, now I was playing versus 12. I was intimidated and I knew that my, achieving my dream of getting to the national tournament rested on this single day. I went in and on the first 18 holes, it was amazing. I remember finishing my round and signaling casually to my dad I had shot three over par as I went over to sign my scorecard. Even my dad, who's my biggest cheerleader and my greatest golf buddy, couldn't believe what I had done. It was completely amazing. And in fact, it was good enough to get me second place at the regional qualifier, which meant I was going forward to the national tournament to represent Bogota. This was in itself an amazing accomplishment. However, this time I was able to maintain everything under control. However, things don't always work out as we want. The best golfers are those who are able to play under pressure and tackle each of the hazards that come their way. Those are also the people that do life best. They're able to work during hard times despite their fears and they acknowledge that they fail only when they don't even try. However, as I told you before, getting to the tournament was, wasn't, wasn't easy at all. During the summer before the tournament, I went, to, I went to the United States to an amazing junior golf academy where I got to the opportunity to learn tips and tricks that would help me at nationals. It was in this moment that I realized I was doing everything. I went to California to play at a tournament with over 300 junior golfers from around the world. I was doing anything in my hands to be prepared. To be prepared. However, at this point, everything started going downhill. It was like a golf hole full of hazards, and I kept hitting the bunker, going out of bounds, and being just short of the flag. You see, around two weeks before the tournament, I was out on the course by myself practicing, when I suddenly got this unbearable pain just below my right rib. I thought it was a normal stomach ache, but within a few minutes, I was in tears. I called my mom and she quickly rushed me to the hospital. It was at this moment that I felt like my dream was drifting further and further away from me. I was told I had appendicitis and had to get surgery immediately. Both teachers and doctors told my parents that I wouldn't be able to play, that I wouldn't be trained, that I wouldn't have the energy to do it. But I wasn't letting my dream getting, get out of my hands that easily. The, the agonizing pain I felt just from getting up from bed made me doubt my ability to play. So I had to think long and hard. And at some point, I met, made the realization, this is my dream. And despite the pain, I'm going to go after it. So I finally made it to nationals. It was a very exciting moment for me. I was proud of myself and couldn't believe what I had done. It was here at nationals that I played my dream. The first three days went well, and I made the cut for the fourth day.
I was playing so well that in fact at some point in the third day, I was third in my category. However, I couldn't hide the pain anymore. But the important thing is that I finished. I finished the tournament. I ended up placing fifth for, my, for the 13 to 14 age group in Colombia. No one could believe what I had done. No one believed in me in the first place. Why would they believe in me two weeks after surgery? But I dreamed it and I achieved it, just as you can dream anything that you think of. As I told you before, and as Joan said, you have to play the ball from where it lies. And for me, the ball lied in a rough spot. I could have just picked up my ball and retired from the tournament, but I didn't. I finished and I achieved my dream. I got a good break from a bad shot. In an ideal world, I would have been at my 100% for the tournament, but life's not perfect and you have to make something of the journey. And in this journey, you must acknowledge that you'll fall and you'll have to get back up. You have to find a dream and a desire to achieve it. You have to know that getting to that dream won't be easy. It will take a lot of practicing. However, the outcome would be of extreme success. So now I ask you, what is your dream in life? What's that one thing that you want to do before you die. You must know that getting there, there will be like a hole full of hazards. You'll face bunkers, out of bounds, and waters, and when you get there, you'll realize it'll be a teeny tiny hole to knock your ball into. However, no matter what, you'll always have to play the ball from where it lies. So I hope from today you can remember, like golf, life is an intricate game. So. Go to the driving range, perfect your swing, make up the hazards your most exciting challenges, and play it well. Thank you.